So Stephen, uh, thanks for coming in and talking on uh, Pilot Lounge. Um, so you're the president of Sky Typers. Uh, tell me about what Sky Typers do. It's something I'm not uh, super familiar with. Well, Sky Typers is an outdoor aerial advertising company. We make the world's largest messages in the world. Each message is 1,200 feet tall and expands up to five miles in length. We're a mass communicator. So how many, how many airplanes usually fly at a time? Sky typing is done by a process of computer controlled system that is utilizing five aircraft in a line of breast formation. And once we get into that line of breast formation at 10,000 to 12,000 feet altitude, the computer takes over and makes a message as tall as the Empire State Building and five miles in length. Every four seconds, a letter is produced. Can you just kind of walk me through like the whole flight? Sure. A typical flight, basically the prep of the airplanes are done early in the morning and um, pilots come in. We have a brief of what we're gonna do for the day, where, we're, where the flight plan is. Um, I flight lead, so um, I give a briefing you know, on what we're gonna do how we're gonna do it, formation, and uh, we'll get together uh, about an hour prior to flight time. Uh, we'll take off uh, in altitude and formation. We'll climb up to about 10,000, 11,000 feet. Uh, at that moment, we'll hit the target markets that we're gonna hit, and um, we'll go into a line of breast formation, and we'll start the sky typing messages. Once each message is done, each message spans about 20, 25 characters in length, and it takes about three minutes, three and a half minutes to do a message, to give you an idea. And um, say, for example, we're gonna do the Hollywood sign. Um, it's about 45 minutes up to altitude, about 10,000 to 12,000 feet altitude. And the reason it spans, A, to keep clear of uh, Klaus Bravo airspace, number one. Number two, um, has to do with turbulence in the altitude. It's not winds aloft, but it's more turbulence. Uh, we want smooth, calm um, weather. And so the messages stay up longer. And sometimes it varies in altitude. So we'll go out there and we'll, we'll figure out the right altitude and we'll do the messages. And um, after that, uh, when the message is complete, we'll go into a, uh, we call it a V formation and where the aircraft can move, maneuver better and say our next destination might be um, downtown Los Angeles. So we'll maneuver downtown LA and then we'll get to the right area we want to go and then we'll go into a line of breast formation again and repeat the process. And we'll go down and we'll do 20, 30 messages. There's from LA, Santa Monica, Burbank area. We'll circle down the Southern, Calif Southern um, Orange County area. We'll hit the beaches, come up the, up the coastline down to up to LA and then we'll swing inland and come back to Chino. Right now the planes are based out of Chino, um, they do base out of um, Las Vegas as well. So we're back and forth, but um, we do have a maintenance facility here in Chino, so we do base out of here quite often, especially during our season, uh, due to, we do a, a lot of beach work in the uh, summer months. That's cool, obviously something very visible from below. How many, like if you're flying over a populated area, how, how far of an area can people usually see the, the messages? The messages can be seen 10 to 15 miles around. And usually each message is occupying about 33 million square feet in the sky. And it's, it's in a densely populated area, area such as Los Angeles, I'm hitting millions of people with one message. And we go up there typically and we'll do 20 to 30 messages, really getting the message out and everyone can see it. Who knows so what, what kind of messages do you normally display you know, when obviously when things are back to normal? Well, we do a lot of Fortune 500 companies. Um, we'll do um, major events. Um, for example, we do have done the opening of the, of the Olympics, 84 Olympics. Um, we have big major clients such as Geico. We put Geico insurance up in the sky. We've had major clients such as um, Starbucks and um, Copper Tone. Uh, tan on the beaches and we do um, corporate events and we do obviously personal messages when we're up there um, some there are a lot of marry me's out there the um, marriage proposals to weddings destination weddings and um, they want the best of the best and I've done everything you can think of from personal to to corporate stuff and so what what do you guys fly 
on the West Coast, we use um, Grumman Tigers, AA5Bs, and uh, we have a fleet of six of those out here on the West Coast. And on the East Coast, we use uh, World War II S&J's AT6s. Um, started with my grandfather back in the day, um, actually had 18 of them, and uh, we spread them East Coast and West Coast. The East Coast is still on behalf of Geico Sky Typers, still run air show networks, um, and they are still utilizing those aircraft. Um, and we also set up a third fleet, which is down in uh, North Carolina, and they're using uh, RV aircraft. That's neat. You told me a little bit about the history. Can you tell me a little bit more about the, uh, the history of the company and how you got involved? Yeah, um, I got involved. Obviously, I was born and raised into the business. And uh, I've been flying since I was, you know, pretty much five years old in the back of a T6, learned how to learn how to fly and got, I was very passionate about flying, um, flew with my dad, um, learned how to skywrite when I was young and um, wanted, you know, at the time I wanted to go in the airlines when I started getting uh, older and there was a hiring freeze and I couldn't get into the airlines, but, um, you know, always had that passion. and. Uh, the other passion I had was the sky typing, which is, you know, now I'm third generation into it, but uh, that wasn't my background at first. Um, I have a background in, in finance, financial management and investments and um, went my own route at one time doing um, the corporate world, corporate America for 10, 15 years and uh, always, always had a passion to fly and I wanted to make a difference and to, sh to bring that corporate knowledge back to the business and to expand it and run it more uh, instead of a, you know, I would say a family business to run more of a corporation type business and expand it and grow it. And so that's what, that was my involvement. I came back um, in 2010 and I said uh, to my father, I said, I'll go, you and I will go 50, 50, but uh, we got to have patents on this process. And, it took me a series of eight years to get the patent. We started in 1996. In 2006 or seven, we got the patent. And um, so I became uh, a president at that moment. And um, we've been going strong ever since. And so you said it's the, the actual messages are, the smoke is put out with a computer program. Can you talk about how that works a little bit? Yeah, well, we have the patent on it. We, you know, my grandfather came up with the idea in 1948 actually. And um, I'm third generation in the business and I've repatented it in 2006. And the way that works, uh, the aircraft, it's, it's all, it's all Wi-Fi based how it is now. It's digitally con controlled from the master ship in the airplane, center airplane. And they all sync to the master ship and everything is basically automated. Um, I control the master ship uh, computer and I control the messages that are going to be displayed. All the pilots do is fly the formation. Um, so did you guys develop, you said you developed the computer program or how did that, how did it go about figuring that whole thing out? Yeah, it took several years to figure that out. Basically my grandfather back in the day was the original Pepsi Skywriter in 1932 writing Pepsi for 20 something years. Um, the company was called Skywriting Corporation of America. And he had 22 airplanes scattered across the United States, literally with one airplane riding Pepsi. It took two and a half minutes to form each letter, which we do sky typing in four seconds. And he wanted a faster way to do it. So he came up with the process of sky typing. And that is with a, a plural of aircraft, which there are five, a minimum of five to do the English library. And it started with nine airplanes, went down to seven airplanes, and now five airplanes, which is the most efficient way to do the English library. So with that, um, we ran that for many years. And um, when I came around the digital age, learning about computers, um, this was something I wanted to improve upon. And we did, we made it very digital and made it ex um, ex expandive meaning we can do multiple aircraft, we can do logos, we can do different uh, messages, uh, different languages, and um, different formations. And we're doing stuff with night and different types of smoke colors as well. So all this technology 
as what I brought to the table and it has been repatented um, in 2006. So since then we've been running strong with that, with that patent and uh, expanding our business capabilities worldwide to bring this across. Uh, people have never seen this before. In, in parts of the United States, people haven't seen this. This has been something that's been on the East Coast and West Coast for you know about 50 years. And still to this day, I can do sky typing and people have never seen it before. It's like a new thing. And um, that's what we wanna do. We wanna get this out because we can actually display huge messages and get reach such as the message that we put across um, a few days back with the uh, positive messages that we wanted to put out for everyone. Yeah, so obviously there was a, a lot of news about the, the, the messages about COVID appearing in the sky. Can you talk about where the idea for that came from and where the impact that those messages had? Yeah, I mean, the idea came from basically ourselves internally here. This is something that's a major epidemic that's affecting our, our community, our population. The pilots and I came together in a series of meetings and say, we want to do something. We have the best communication tool out there. Um, and we felt that it was our, you know, internally, that is something that we wanted to do and give back to the community. We want to give some positive messages. There's a lot of people that are not, you know, not doing well. Um, I wanted to give thanks to the first responders and healthcare workers that are helping out the USN uh, Mercy ships for over here in Southern California, which I get thanks to them as well. Um, we just wanted to give thanks and praise and give people that we're all going to get through this together. Um, this is a community effort. We're all trying to do best we can to stay inside, to stay quarantined, and, and to give hope. And, and uh, there's no better way than what we did. Um, all, our, all our pilots were, you know, we're in each in our own airplanes, we're quarantined ourselves, um, you know, and uh, we feel like we, we could get that message across to show something that um, can still happen, meaning there's people still flying out there and, and that we can get these message out, messages out there to millions of people. And I would love to do this, continue to do this in different parts of the states and to, to inquire inspiration and, and, and flight as well to others that that we you know we're, we're going to continue to do this cool yeah i mean it definitely seems like a lot of people were were inspired by the message so are you are planning to do some flights like that in other in other places yes i would like to um i mean new york um you know once things get a little bit better over there um there's some good things that we probably want and positive messages that we want to put out there um the southeast area as well certain areas such as um Louisiana has been hit pretty hard and some very troubled states that could use the positive messaging. I think um, that's some places we want to hit some good target areas. Do you have a favorite or a most rewarding message or memorable story you can think of? I will say what we've recently pulled off in the last week or so with the COVID-19 messages um, were very uplifting and gave us, it, it gave a lot of self-satisfaction uh, to put those up there, I, fe I felt really good about it. Um, I'm not going to. There's some other one, other times, but this this is something that has never. It's unprecedented what's happened, and um, I, I felt really good about putting those messages up there. And and I would say this is one of the top things I could tell you. Well, it sounds like a uh, sounds like a really neat uh, way to communicate using general aviation. So thank you for taking the time to to tell us about it and. Thanks also for the, the COVID messaging that um, seems like it's something that really has impacted a lot of people. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir.